Hi everybody, I'm Peter Chittam and I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. In this particular Quick Takes episode, I'm going to take a look at an issue that one of you all filed against our Lightning Web Components Recipes sample apps uh, that I went in to take a look at last week to see if I could solve it. The problem itself has to do with the default behavior of a web component being inline display and what happens when you try and force a web component to be block display. Uh, I think that sets up the problem really nicely. Um, I do want to give a little shout out to Philippe Ozil on the team who helped me troubleshoot this a little bit. And without any further delay, let's go take a look. Okay, so first off, big shout out to Istheax Force P. That's the user here who opened this issue, especially because it looks like this is the first GitHub issue you've ever opened and you're new to GitHub. So thanks for participating in this open source project. Much appreciated. Let's dig into this bug by taking a look at what's going wrong. Now, this is all about this to do button here in this C API getter setter example component. Now, if I add a to-do item, I would do that by clicking on the button. Unfortunately, what we have is if you click anywhere to the right of that button, it still seems to be firing that event handler. Now, if we go and inspect this and take a look over here, we can see there is our button and that looks all fine. Now, this is a lightning button and there's where our problem is because that lightning button spans the entire width of the page. In addition to that, that's the thing that actually owns the event listener. So uh, that event handler is going to fire off anytime anybody clicks anywhere on the space occupied by lightning button, even though to the end user it doesn't look like the actual button they're supposed to be clicking. Now, if we dig a little bit deeper into this, we can take a look and see our lightning button has this SLDS show class and SLDS show is applying display block and if we turn that off we can see that that actually gets rid of it spanning the entire width because uh, that's what block does. Block display makes the thing that it applies to take up the entire width of its container. Uh, unfortunately, that also upsets the flow of the rest of the page. In other words, we need something there to be block-based. We just don't need it to be the actual lightning button itself uh, because, you know, obviously that's the sort of unintended side effect of having the lightning button span the entire width. Now, let's go take a look at the markup as it's written in the source code. If we take a look at this, we can see that, uh, so one thing is that we have this spacing here and that's a padding utility class. So we're trying to put some space between the button and the other items in that card. Uh, and we also know that SLDS show, you know, that's actually kind of, you know, it's, it's solving one problem but causing another. So one way that I tried to solve this was remove it and try and find another utility class that could kind of take its place. Uh, but the problem is that we, we need for the lightning button to not be block-based, but we need something block-based. So the easiest way to solve this is just to apply a div around it. So let's do that. Okay, and then I'm going to go and grab the class that we've applied to the lightning button. I'm going to pop that into my div. Uh, it's already block-based. Divs are block-based. So I'm just going to keep the padding. And if I now go back and take a look, looks like we're in good shape. So now again, going and inspecting that button, uh, we can see that even when I have my cursor over lightning button, it's not spanning the entire width, but the div that surrounds it is. Uh, but there's no event handler on that div, so 
we are good to go. Now once I got things sorted with the to do button, uh, I did notice that down here this C to do list custom component uh, is also using SLDS show. And I thought I'd, I'd you know go through the thought exercise of what would it be to fix this. Um, but that even comes up with the question of, does it really matter with this component? The, the main reason for fixing the other one is we had this unintended side effect of an event handler. In this instance, we don't. So in reality, this is probably okay. Maybe not the best best practice to be using SLDS show, which is really meant to be a utility class for hiding and showing things, to force this to be block instead of inline. But, you know, it's, it's probably okay. Uh, on the other hand, if we decided that we did want to fix this, what would we need to do? Uh, it's important to notice that in this particular case, in addition um, to the SLDS show and SLDS is relative, in the CSS, there's also a CSS selector that is defined for this component. So let's go take a look at all of that in the source code and see what we need to do to fix that. So that CSS selector corresponds to this CSS in the API getter setter component. Uh, now, this is an element-based selector, meaning it's going to map to the C to do list element in our code. And we can see that when C to do list is there, that works just fine. And the whole reason for this CSS is to have this nice little outline that we have that calls attention to the fact that we have a child component that's composing the bigger component, okay? So this is really a bit of display just because this is a sample, a code sample. Um, on the other hand, it is kind of a cool little CSS effect if you ever wanted to duplicate it somewhere else. Let's go see what we need to change. Now, at the face of things, the main thing we need to do is just like we did before, uh, which is to add the div and surround C to do list with that. We want to grab the class out of C to do list and put that into div. And then, because the div, of course, as we've said, is block, we can remove SLDS show. Let's go take a look and see what that's done so far. Now, what we can see is that that nice, neat outline that was going around the component has now been upset. And again, kind of the primary reason for this is that selector is not correct. It's trying to go to the C to do list component, uh, but now there's this div surrounding that component, and it's getting a little confused, obviously. So what we can do then is go back to our CSS, and instead of having this be an element-based selector, we can simply go in and change this to be a class-based selector. And then we can simply apply that class to the div. So c-to-do list. And if we pop back over, boom, we're back where we need to do. Now, once again, I'll reiterate, Maybe I didn't need to do this. Maybe I might need to do this. Uh, but again, you know, it's a good example of how CSS interplays with uh, the different bits and components on your page. Uh, and if you're going to start to pull at these things, you need to dig a little bit further to see what's the right way to get them working in that new page structure. So there you have it. Just a quick little walkthrough of how to troubleshoot display block mode for a web component, uh, and specifically in Lightning Web Components, of course. Um, hope you found it useful, and if you did, make sure to click on like, and be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get notifications for new videos. Thanks very much.